Hello there, welcome back. Uh, listen, if you've made it this far, congratulations. Um, you'll be glad to hear that all of that configuration stuff is behind us now, so we don't need to worry about any more of that stuff. And finally, we can relax and enjoy some uh, just, you know, normal PHP. So congratulations. I think you're going to find that this is quite an easy uh, video and... Uh, hopefully quite a good video because we're now in going into territory that you're probably very familiar with, okay? So, let's begin by going into whatever you're using. I'm using PHP My Admin here. And I've created a database called My Slim Site, okay? And now I'm going to create a table called Books, which is going to have four columns. It's going to have an ID, which will be an int, and that will be the primary key, auto increment. You can handle that, right? We're going to have a column called book title, which is going to be a variable character of 250. Then we're going to have a column called author, which is also going to be a variable, variable character of 250. Finally, I'm going to have a column called Amazon URL, and I'll have this as a variable character of 250, okay? Um, this table doesn't really mean much, really. It's just an example to get us all started. So what I want you to do now is let's just insert a few records. You can add anything you want, you know, it doesn't matter. It's only to get us started. So I'm going to add, let's see, the four hour work week. I'm giving this a mention because I actually think this is the best book of the last 50 years, okay? Uh, highly recommended. So let's add one in like so. Listen, you can add anything. I'm just going to add three rows, okay? Let's do Think and Grow Rich. We'll give Napoleon Hill a little mention. Don't worry about the URL thing, it's just, you know, it's okay. Uh, what's another cool book? How about something like How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, okay, Dale Carnegie wrote that. And I'll just go with www.blah.com. So I've just added three rows here. Nothing special. You can add anything you want. It's just to get started, okay? Now, we do have this books thing all ready to rock. However, it just says welcome to books, so there's not much going on. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to get this script reading uh, from this database table. And we're going to display that information. We're going to basically spit it out as JSON data, okay? Or JSON, as some people call it. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say a few words, if that's okay. Just take a minute to talk about database interaction with the Slim Framework. Now, the Slim Framework does not come with any kind of ORM or any... Um, query builders or anything like that. There's no active record stuff, nothing like that. And as far as databases go, you are pretty much left to go and figure it out and just do what you like to do. Now, I've seen some tutorials. For example, here's one here, and it's basically doing the same thing as us, you know, create a REST application with the Slim Framework. But one of the interesting things is that when you look, um, let me see if I can find this actually, you'll see that they say to interact with this MySQL database you should down, download Redbean, uh, a low footprint ORM library. And I noticed that a lot of developers, like we have in this tutorial, which seems to be from IBM.com, uh, a lot of developers love to put things between your code and the database, you know, like like Red Bean or some people like to chuck Doctrine or something like that in there, you know, just something to kind of interact with the database, you know. And I actually uh, don't think that this is a particularly good idea, especially because, 
you know, there's nothing we're going to be doing here that's complicated. It's just basic crud, you know. And why bother bloating the script? Why bother slowing everything down? Now, listen, don't take my word for this. Let's have a listen to the guy who is the founder, the creator of PHP. Here he is at a seminar, Rasmus Lerdorf. And I just want to play a little bit of this. I've borrowed it from my YouTube page, obviously, and I encourage you to check this out. But look at his answer to this question about frameworks. I think it's very interesting. Hey, can you tell us your opinion about frameworks? Thank you. They all suck. <laughs> right. So, while they all suck, everyone needs a framework. What everyone doesn't need is a general purpose framework. Nobody has a general problem. Everyone has a very specific problem they're trying to solve. And a general purpose framework, while it can solve it, it usually solves it in a way that you get so many other things that you don't need that ends up being done on every request. There are frameworks that check to see which database you're using. So you have a request, hey, which database are we using? MySQL, okay, let's load the MySQL class that loads up this thing, that loads up this thing, that initializes the ORM and tells it to use this database. Two milliseconds later, the next request comes in. Hey, which database are we using? Still MySQL, right? And then every request, we're asking all these questions, there's always hooks and all these things, dynamic decisions that need to be made on every single request, that does not change from one request to the next. If you haven't hooked this particular hook in the API, you haven't hooked it two milliseconds later or two milliseconds after that. So usually what happens when a big company, when a company grows, and they started with a general purpose framework, they start optimizing things by ripping stuff out. And they just tear the framework apart to the point where they could never upgrade. So if there's a new version of the framework, it doesn't really matter because they've modified the damn framework so much that they're stuck on the version they're on. And I think that's a huge problem. So I, would, I wish that the framework guys... Okay, that'll do. I'll let you go and check it out. And I find this so interesting. And I had to just play that because I think what he's, he's talking about is, is very relevant to us, you know? Why should we have something like Red Bean or something or Doctrine or something else coming between our code and the database? It's just going to slow things down. And in my opinion, it's going to be completely unnecessary. So we are going to stick with uh, just good old fashioned PHP. Now that leaves us with two choices. Do we go with PDO, right? And uh, PDO is an acronym for PHP Data Objects, blah, 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 blah. Or do we go with MySQLi, blah, blah, right? Now, there's no right or wrong answer. You can use whatever you want. But let me give you my take on this. Um, I made this little table up just before I came on. And basically, you know, you, you can read into this all night if you want, but to me, it comes down to a few things. Um, does the thing deliver fast performance? Well, in both cases, the answer is I. It does, okay? Uh, does it have easy to understand syntax? In the case of MySQLi, well, I, it's got easy to understand syntax. In the case of PDO, I would have to say no, you know. Now, this is just a, a personal thing. It's, you know, you are welcome to disagree. Maybe I'm an idiot, okay? Put me on file as being an idiot. I can handle it, right? But to me, personally, I just find the syntax for PDO a little bit kind of strange. I, it's, I'm not entirely comfortable with it, you know. So the next thing is, is this able to handle multiple database types? In the case of MySQLi, the answer is no, right? It can only deal with MySQLi. However, in the case of PDO, the thing can handle lots of different database types. So it's not just restricted to MySQL, right? And the last variable, uh, is it used by my friend Derek? I'm talking about my friend Derek McLean, he's a really good web developer. He likes to use the Zend framework and he's just a really super technical guy. He is the guy that gets the phone call at four in the morning when something breaks, you know. 
and uh, when he gives advice and all that, it's normally very good. So does Derek use this? Well, he doesn't bother with MySQL, but he MySQL I. But yes, he uses the PDO thing. So that's kind of interesting. And <clears throat> pardon me. Based on this table, it's all looking as if it we're moving towards PDO. But you know, folks, there is one thing that tips the balance here, and it's not on the table. I can tell you, folks, that in all the years I've been involved in this, and I've been involved in some kind of professional web building since the mid-1990s, and in all of those years, I have never had a client come to me and say to me, hey man, can you change the database type? You know, we have like MySQL, but we're thinking of changing to Oracle or something. Folks, I'm sure it happens out there, but I'm just saying it has never happened to me. Maybe it's happened to you, but it's never happened to me. So with that being the case, this is ultimately a choice between going with the rest of the herd or making things easy. And to me, if I'm giving the, given the choice between making something easy or making something more difficult, then I will choose easy every day of the week. So for that reason, folks, I'm going to use my SQLi. Let's do some coding and let's get this thing rocking and rolling. So to begin with, I want you to go into the API folder and we're going to make a new file called dbconnect.php, okay? And we're going to have, and by the way, this is something that you've done like loads of times before because it's very simple we're just going to have host equals now in my case it's going to be localhost we're going to have user equals in my case that will be root we're going to have pass equals for me that's empty then we're going to have db underscore name equals my slim site and then lastly we're going to write MySQLi equals new MySQLi and then in the brackets we're going to say host user pass db name. Okay, simple as that folks, it's as simple as that. Now, oops, let's go into the books thing and at the moment as you know it basically just says welcome to books so there's not much happening here okay so let's take that out and we'll space out so we can see what's happening here and I want you to say at the top require once db connect dot php and by the way as we do this um Please take a moment to just appreciate how simple all of this is and how nice and short and simple all of, all of the syntax is. Like I say, I'm in the business of making stuff easy, you know? So this is all stuff you've seen before. Let's do a query. Let's say select all from books. How about order by ID, okay? Nice and simple, folks, nice and simple. Then I'm gonna say result equals uh, MySQLi, we're loading up that query and firing in, sorry, firing in that, uh, firing in our SQL query. And then down here, we're going to say while row equals this result, loading up fetch ASOC, let's do some curly brackets. And we're going to have a data array which equals row, like so. And then it's as simple as this. All you have to do is say echo JSON, JSON or JSON, however you pronounce it's all right with me, encode data. And there we have it. So now when we go to this page, if we refresh, oh gee, one moment. I'm sorry. DB can. <laughs> that was the uh, deliberate mistake of the day. Congratulations if you spotted that. Let's go back. And here we are. We have a whole bunch of uh, JSON data here, and that is just fantastic. Now, there's a couple of things we can do to improve this. There's actually a whole bunch of things, but we'll do a couple of things. 
uh, which uh, you know might be a good idea. If we were to go select all from books where ID equals 99 and load up this page, what do you think is going to happen? The answer is we're going to get an error because there is no data variable. So what we could do is we could just say if is set data then echo JSON encode data. So we could do that. Okay, so then, you know, it gives us a nice empty page, but no error messages if there's no results. And I think that's kind of cool, right? Um, one other thing that we can do, which is a really uh, good practice, before you fire that JSON data onto the screen, I want you to say header content dash type and then we're going to do a colon space application forward slash json okay there we go now it doesn't really change anything on the ground however i think i'm not entirely sure but i think it prevents uh, the page from caching which could be a problem if you've got um, something like Angular reading the data and you, you don't want the page to cache the data. I think I may be wrong, I don't know, but in any event it's a good practice to have this header content type is application forward slash JSON. And folks, I think we're going to stop there. So there you have it and I'll see you in the next video. Ding, 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 ding. Bye.